And it's David, it's One Up Gaming, it's episode 360 of the One Up Gaming podcast. So this week we'll have a quick run through. I'm just recording it on a Monday, which is a little bit early because I've got two full days at work. And then on the Wednesday, no, on the Thursday I like to just chill. So I need to get this all recorded and all done. And then I'll edit it off bit by bit throughout the week, ready to go Friday. So, as I say, 360 of the One Up Gaming podcast. Sponsored, as always, by Games Inspired Music. It's an album. You can stream it. You can buy it. 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. And we'll do some giveaways straight away. First of all, Evercade Cartridge Interplay Collection 2. If you want this, just leave a comment on any of our videos that says Evercade and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So Evercade and subscribe win this we also have one of our t-shirts that you can win again just subscribe to the youtube channel and leave the comment t-shirt and we'll give that away as soon as someone puts t-shirt on any of our videos and that my friends is basically it we do have a load of steam games so we have some steam codes for two different games and we also have some humble bundle keys. So again, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, just subscribe to it. Complete bla- b- brain fart moment. Just subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to us. Like us, share us. Let everyone else know. Just leave a comment on any of our videos once you've subscribed that just says either Steam or Humble Bundle. And we'll give out a code like we've got loads of them to give away so we'll give out these as many as we can throughout the days so back into what we've been doing so episode 360 uh joe dowling his book the outrunners out now please buy this um get it on the amazon kindle store i'm gonna say and if you subscribe to the Amazon Prime, I think you can buy this, well, get this included within the subscription service. Um, try to think what else is there. I think that's it. I think it's it. So I will have a quick two-second break, and we'll be back with the games played this week. Hello, Andy. This is Colin. I won't be able to get in the night. No, 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 no. I'm sweating all big. I'm sweating all big. And we're back, it's still episode 360 of the One Up Game podcast. Still David here, One Up Gaming. And we're going to go through the games being played this week. First of all, I want to say that I have actually watched The Flash, the movie. And it was good. It wasn't great. It, but it was like one of the better DC movies that I've seen. Uh, I've never really enjoyed time travel movies. So that kind of threw me off a wee bit. And I will say that I don't think all the CG sort of like commentary it was necessary. For me, the the movie technically it didn't look great the CG, but I think it was artistically chosen to have that kind of weird look. Because I don't think you would purposely make it look that saturated and that weird. I honestly think that they went for a time dilation thing and made it look a bit warped and a bit weird. That's what I think. I don't think that all this malarc about this stuff is worth it. Decent movie. I don't think it's worth the millions of dollars that it was made to like produce and make. But it was good. So, first game played this week was the Enigma Machine. Now, this one, it looks as though you start off at a job and it's a simple text screen and you have to basically like like the computer is talking to you and you have to reply back like give it your what you're doing what you're up to like a dos commands and it's really quite interesting you know how it like, does all that and then once you get so far through that sort of sequence it goes into a first person view puzzle game but the graphical style is very pixelated, um, kind of 1995 era 
very janky, very grainy, but again, it's an artistic style, but again, it was a, probably a budget game, so it's probably easier for them to do that. I enjoyed it until we got to puzzles, and then I just tapped out because my brain doesn't do puzzles, but if you're interested in a puzzle game with a first person interface with a proper full computer, I'd give it a go. It, it seemed quite interesting. It was cheap. Cheap as... I say cheap as chips, but they're quite expensive now. Uh, but yeah, the Enigma Machine. Not a bad little game. Next up, 8 Ball Pocket. Now this one, what can you say? It's a basic snooker, well, I guess it's pool simulator sort of thing. And I can't remember because I'm an idiot if it had UK rules and American rules, but I think I played a game of the American rules, uh, stripes and dots, I think, that, that and the different shape on the break, you know, when you're breaking it, when you queue them all up. But it played all right, it looked all right, nothing special. The only criticism I had, when you were aiming, it was very slow or very fast. It was, you couldn't, it, it, mm, it just didn't have that, thing about it, it was just a bit weird, um, but yeah, 8 Ball Pocket, I wouldn't recommend, it's not the best game that I played, it's not the worst, but I wouldn't recommend it. Next up, Crazy Trucks, now this game, oh my lord, it's a monster truck racing game that has horrendous physics, it has donuts for wheels, it's so saturated, the bright colours just glow on the screen, it looks like lava. And it does look like a game made for the PS2, just shined up a little bit to go on to like, the newer consoles. It's cheap, it's crap, it's rubbish, the physics are all over the place, you hit a can, you bounce all over, and it's just crap. Do not buy this game, I bought this game because I'm an idiot. But you do not have to buy this game. Next up, I'm going to have a bit of a talk about this one now. So, Ant Stream Arcade. Now, I was really interested in this a year or so ago on the PC. But things happened and I didn't want to subscribe to a service. So, I never got into the Ant Stream sort of thing. I, I knew about it, I, I was interested in it. But I never got into it. And then I didn't know nothing about this, but then all of a sudden I got loads of emails saying Antstream Arcade is out now for the Xbox Series X. I guess it's like Xbox One, Xbox, all the Xboxy sort of consoles, I never guess. And this is a, a, a portal, a, a wrapper that you open up and then it loads up to, I think it's got like over 1,300 old retro games so I think it's got and I might get some wrong Arcade PS1 Amiga so Commodore Amiga C64 uh, Mega Drive SNES can't think of anything else off the top of my head but it's got like the 16 bit the 8 bit it's probably got NES yeah it's got NES so it's got like, all those sort of games covered and you just go on to one of the games that's there you can favourite it, you can do challenges, you can uh, read about them and then you click play and it just boots straight into the game and you play it so you are technically streaming the game but because I don't know why but it, it, it works well, the streaming service works well on this game it looks good, it looks decent there isn't as much um, pixelation, there isn't as much ghosting as some of the other streaming services I've used in the past. It's not as good as Boostroid, as I, I think Boostroid's technology is really good, but that's £10 a month and then you'll also have to have your own games. This one you pay, I think it's £30, and you get a year's subscription to the service. Or you can pay £79.99. And it gives you like a lifetime membership to the service. So you have to think, is it going to last three and a half years or is it not with licensing agreements and all that kind of stuff going on? But 
Antstream Arcade, amazing little bit of software, great thing. I recommend it. If you're into retro stuff, it's a no-brainer. Buy it, subscribe to it, play the games, it's amazing. So, next game, Hogwarts Legacy. Now, I was never a big Harry Potter fan. I kind of got that beaten into me by one of my ex-partners years ago. Uh, she would watch all the movies, she would listen to all the audiobooks every night before going to bed. And it kind of got drilled into my little feeble brain. And so I thought, I'll give it a go. And Hogwarts Legacy, it's more of a third person action RPG sort of game. It looks stunning, you know, the background, the all the scenery, the photo box things look absolutely stunning. Gameplay is a little bit samey samey, does nothing new, but if you're into the Harry Potter world, the wizarding world, you create your own character, actually you don't, sorry, I'm a liar. You are a pre someone from that's 15 that gets brought into Hogwarts and yeah, stories and you get the hat on, you cho choose who you you are, what what house you're in, you go and then you sort of start exploring the castle and it's amazing, it's absolutely amazing, I love this game. Then we had MX vs ATV All Out. Now this one is the precursor to the one that's came out, was it last year or the year before now, I can't remember. But like the full open world Rainbow Studios style off-road racing game so you can have like MX bikes, ATVs uh, little quad bikey things, little buggies and it's an open world it plays great if you loved all these old Rainbow Studio games from years ago now they did do a lot of PS2 stuff and PC stuff their gameplay is amazing I love the gameplay moment to moment gameplay is amazing graphics look good and I easily recommend it and the, I can't remember what the hell the new one is now is it alive? can't remember but the new one if you can get that that's also amazing I love that as well so the last game that we played this week is Steel Rats now this one I loved the intro I loved the music proper grungy heavy metal guitar and it's uh, you're in a biker gang and you find out that all the people have been kidnapped or whatever stories and you it's a side on platform style game but you're on your motorbike and you actually press a button to make the front wheel turn into like a razor bladey uh, saw and you cut through things as you're driving around and you combat people you fight people and it's a little puzzly platformy sort of game it's really nice it's cheap, it's really cheap and I easily say it is a good little game so buy that I recommend that and as a cheap cheerful side on 3D kinda 2D 2.5D sort of game it's a good little one so we've been playing the boost ride stuff so please watch our videos so as always we have every Monday we have the UK top 40 charts Tuesday we have the boost ride video on a Wednesday we have Witch's Best, on Thursdays we have the Retro Thursdays, Fridays we have the podcast which is normally live, not live, but it's recorded live and I edit it together, it's live. And we also have the games played this week on a Saturday and every Sunday we have this week's news. So please check out our website which is oneupgaming.co.uk, got loads of reviews on there, loads of new news pieces on there, loads of bits and bobs. So thank you to all the new staff great having a team again it's nice and i will end that here and we'll come back with a quick break after a qu we'll come back after a quick break and we'll have this week's news hello still david still one up gaming still episode 360 of the one up gaming podcast so we'll go straight into this week's news and when I say that, first of all, put Evercade on any of our videos as a comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and win this Evercade Interplay Collection 2 cartridge. 
t-shirt, one of our t-shirts. Again, subscribe, leave a comment, t-shirt and any videos for this chance to win a t-shirt. And we have some Steam games and some Humble Bundle games. So just subscribe and leave a comment, either Steam or Humble Bundle. And we'll get those games emailed out to you as soon as we can. So, news. We'll go straight into this week's news. So first of all, Starfield pickpocketing will make things way more intense by playing out in real time. Uh, players who enjoy stripping Bethesda's NPCs of everything they're worth won't have such an easy time of it in Starfield as pickpocketing will happen in real time. Space Thieves will have an extra level of intensity when picketing, picket, picking the pockets of poor NPCs as unlike in previous Bethesda games like Skyrim or Fallout 4, time won't pause during so in Starfield. A Reddit post from Ockpain... 20, 2022 shared a silver sliver of Starfield gameplay previously gone unnoticed that shows the player creeping around behind an unsuspecting guard as they pull items from their pockets from their person. Players no longer have all the time in the world to weigh up the odds of taking items, which are presented alongside a percentage chance of alerting the NPC, significantly raising the stakes. Some users also wondered. If this means lock picking will happen in real time too, I wonder if lock picking will be the same way said bar 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 twenty one twelve in the replies. It is in dying light and adds a considerable amount of anxiety while trying to lock pick with baddies nearby. Starfield's perhaps the most anticipated video game release in recent memory, and has therefore captured the attention of fans in some wild and wonderful ways. Virtual sandwiches which got people talking about it being locked at 30 frames a second, for example, while the ESR blah, 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 revealed drugs, in-game purchase and jetpack sex. All sounds scrummy to me, to be honest. Um, so what do you guys think? Are you looking forward to the new Starfield? New Starfield? The Starfield game? Are you looking forward to finding out all these weird and wonderful things that happen in this game? If so, please leave comments. We'll chat. We'll talk about this thing. So we're going to the next bit of news, and that is Tencent buys Dying Light developer Techland. Uh, will continue to operate independently and retain ownership of these IPs. Uh, so Tencent announced it's buying Polish developer Techland, the studio behind Dead Island and the well, the original Dead Island and the Dying Light series. Uh, Techland CEO Powell Merchuraka announced that Tencent is currently in the process of becoming the studio's majority shareholder. Teaming up with Tencent will allow us to move full speed ahead with the execution of the vision of our games. We have chosen an ally who has already partnered with some of the world's finest video game companies and helped them reach new heights while respecting their ways of doing things. So he also insisted that Tencent will own the studio. Techland will retain full ownership of his intellectual properties, maintain creative freedom, and continue operating independently. Uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's a good thing for them, or do you think it's a sign that everyone is getting bought now? Everyone is getting bought. It's crazy. It really is crazy how everyone is at the table to be bought and to be sold and yeah so we'll move on to the next sort of like bit of news and that one my friends is iconic Beetlejuice statue stolen from the sequel set a lamppost with a distinctive pumpkin decoration was also stolen a theft on the Beetlejuice 2 set has seen an iconic statue stolen the eye-catching artwork featured in Tim Burton's original 1988 comedy classic and was supposed to feature in the upcoming sequel. However, a report from the Vermont State Police has revealed the statue was stolen alongside a lamppost with a distinctive pumpkin decoration on top. We tried saying the name of the stolen statue three times but it didn't come back, they said in a recent Facebook post. Dumb cheese. 
That's meant to be a drum, sorry, I'm not very good. Uh, Vermont State Troopers are investigating the theft of this £150 set piece from the Beetlejuice to film in location in East Corinth, along with a lamppost topped with a distinctive pumpkin design. Did it actually show what that one looks like? Reportedly stolen between 5pm on Thursday the 13th and 11am on Monday the 17th, oh, so over the weekend. While well, shooting on location in Vermont. Mm. The thieves drove up to the lamppost in an older model GMC pickup truck just after midnight on July 14th, removed the base, and then loaded it onto the truck. Security staff reported that the thieves returned on Monday to steal the statue. No arrests have been made. Oh my god. That's ballsy. Absolutely ballsy. What do you guys think? Build you two. Are you excited? I loved the first one, I really did, I loved Beetlejuice, but I just, for some reason, I just think that a lot of these sequels from movies from 20, 30 years ago, almost 40 years ago now, I guess, um, just don't have the same character and love that the original ones had, but we'll see what we, we will see, comments below. Next up. Elon Musk rebrands Twitter with a new X logo. Elon Musk has pushed through a Twitter rebrand with a new X logo that replaces the iconic Bluebird logo that launched in 2010. Tweets will, re will be replaced according to the Twitter owner and posts will be called X's. The X logo is meant to be min minimalist art deco and may end up changing again in the future. Uh, Musk is a big fan of X when it comes to branding SpaceX, X.com, etc. And is the name of his planned everything app that would encompass Encompass. Oh, I've got an itchy eye, sorry. Uh, functions such as paying the bill for bills and ordering a taxi, inspired by the all encompassing WeChat in China. Uh, yeah, so what do you guys think? I don't know, it's weird. It's weird that you buy something for that much money and then you... I know you want to rebrand things and do things your own way, but you've bought Twitter. Everyone knows Twitter. If someone said to me, are you sending any X's? I'm like, what the fuck are you on about? What are you on about? Are you absolutely out of your bonking mind? But, I don't know. I guess if you're rich and, and stupid, you can do what you want. Comment below. The original 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series will hit Nickelodeon. I hope in the UK they're called Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles, but we'll get into that later maybe. Nickelodeon has acquired the rights to the beloved 1987 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles series. I keep saying it myself. It now owns all 193 episodes of the original animated Fred Wolf series, which ran from 1987 to 1996. Oh, it's not bad. Quite a long series then. In the series, Turtle Brothers Leonardo, Donatello, Raphael and Michelangelo battle the Shredder, Krang and other villains and criminals in the streets of New York. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles also slated, it, slated to debut digitally later this month in the US, followed by Nickelodeon branded channels and digital platforms internationally. The news was revealed today during the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant May Mayhem panel at SDCC 2023. There, the TMNT co-creator Kevin Eastman said the style of the Mutant Mayhem reminds him of the underground style of the comics he and Peter Laird created. He said after the shown footage, he asked when we were getting a sequel. During the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Manhattan SDCC 2023 panel, Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon showed off over 20 minutes of new footage from the upcoming CG animation film. Below is a sneaking in clip from that which I'm not going to show so yeah what do you guys think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles should it be Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles everywhere else because we UK people are pussies and we're not allowed to use the word ninja because it's too graphic also if you're Michelangelo 90% of all your scenes were cut because nunchucks in the UK were banned so every time you had your nunchucks it was taken out of the show that's why in later seasons he used a grappling hook to fight. Fun fact. So, 
um, I guess we'll go to the next bit of news and again very similar sort of news to the turtle is turtle sort of news um, and that my friends is bum -ba -da -bum, Microsoft creates Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles themed pizza scented Xbox controllers uh, announced on the Xbox Wire, the Ooze Green controllers come with a built-in scent diffuser shaped like a slice of pizza perched behind the gamepad. There are four different different designs to accommodate the four different turtles, but only one flavour of pizza scent on offer. Hopefully it's pepperoni. Um, fans of the Teenage Ninja, Ninja Turtles or Gross controllers can enter a competition to win a limited number of gamepads by following the Xbox Game Pass Twitter. And retweeting the sweepstakes tweet by August 13th. Satisfy your hunger and kicking butt with the world's first ever pizza scented controller. Designed to deliver the smell of the turtle's beloved meal to your game time. These exclusive Xbox wireless controllers come with a built in scent diffuser. Shaped like a slice of delicious New York czar. The controller comes in four variations, each representing the signature colours, weapons and personality of a turtle brother. Leonardo, Raphael, Donatello and Michelangelo. Xbox loves to get weird with its controllers, with other notable creations including one made out of actual jade and a pair of fluffy ones celebrating Sonic the Hedgehog. Celebrating Earth Day in April, the company also announced an Xbox wireless controller made partly from reclaimed CDs, water jugs and other Xbox controller parts. So what do you guys think? I'm looking at these now. They look very similar to each other apart from they've all got their name on and they've all got their individual picture on the right hand grip sort of thing. Uh, I guess they've got like different weapons on but I don't know. I don't, I'd like to see how, I'd like to smell how they smell. If that's gross enough for you I don't know. But we will go into the next bit of news because I mean how many comments can you leave about pizza scented controllers uh, but the next bit of news is Ryan Reynolds inexplicably rebooting Biker Maestro Mars so I will just say before reading this I love the Biker Maestro Mars original TV show and I loved the Super Nintendo Biker Maestro Mars game this Isometric racing game, it's really good. So, Biker Master Mars is making a comeback thanks to Ryan Reynolds. A new reboot of the cult classic cartoon is on its way from uh, Nekel, which will be co produced by Fubo and Ryan Reynolds' own production company, Maximum Effort. Some people know that I am a motorcycle enthusiast, said Reynolds in an official announcement. So it was already natural for us to jump on board the Biker Mice from Mars. Maximum Effort and Fubo look forward to putting a new spin on this cult classic with our friends at... I was going to say Nacelle? Nacelle? I don't know. Uh, this new Biker Mice from Mars comes 27 years after the original series ended. The original 90s cartoon told the story of Throttle, Modo and Vinny, three Biker Mice who were the only survivors of a Martian war against the race of obese foul smelling invaders known as the Plutarchians. oh god after a crash landing on Chicago the trio must defend Earth from the Plutarchian threat as the hor horrifying aliens look to plunder the planet of its natural resources it's currently unknown who will voice the original trio of bag of mice yeah I'm not gonna go into much more detail I loved the Biker Mice from Mars. I really loved the Biker Mice from Mars. I loved it so much. I was an idiot. I loved it. Music. Why do the 90s sort of like cartoons have great music? Late 80s, 90s. Amazing. 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 Anyway. If you're a fan of Biker Mice from Mars, leave comments. We'll comment. We'll talk. We'll talk Biker Mice from Mars. That's how we will talk in the future. Next up. The Walking Dead Rick and Michonne spin-off gets a new title and first teaser. Today at San Diego Comic Con we got a new look at the upcoming The Walking Dead spin-off series focused on Rick and Michonne, which now has a new title The Walking Dead The Ones Who Live. Uh, the teaser shown today is narrated by Michonne, who's really been through it over the years and is seen in a sea of red, clearly plagued by the 
discovery that Rick Grimes, with whom she was in a serious relationship years before, is still alive. The two endeavour to find one another in a dangerous, ever-changing, apocalyptic world. We previously thought that the official title was The Walking Dead, Rick and Michonne. But it looks like that's either been changed or that AMC was just making an official logo for a working title at the time. The series sees stars Andrew Lincoln and Diane. Dan I? Dan I? Go ahead. Oh, I don't know. The woman from bloody... Um, yeah, everyone knows who she is. Reprising their roles from The Walking Dead. It is expected to kick off sometime next year, most notably. We're eager to find out what's happened to Rick who seemed to die in the walking dead season 9 but was revealed to be alive in the hands of the Civic Republic military in the final season. I knew he wasn't going to be dead. He didn't show his body. And I'm sure he showed him get picked up and put in a helicopter. I don't know. What do you guys think? Are you excited for a new season? Or has the walking dead just died? Has it really just died? And <clears throat> last bit of news that I have got is more walking dead goodness. And, yeah, so The Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, Daryl, Daryl, Daryl Dixon and Dead City renewed for second seasons. The Walking Dead, um, Daryl Dixon has been renewed for a second season before it's even premiered, along with The Walking Dead, Dead City, as announced today at Comic Con. The news came alongside multiple trailers and teasers shown at the panel of The Walking Dead Universe fan watch party. Which saw a new official trailer for Daryl Daryl Dixon. Why does it say Daryl? The Walking Dead Daryl Dixon is set to kick off on September the 10th and stars Norman Reedus reprising his role as Daryl after he washes ashore in France and must try to figure out how to get home. That's different. Meanwhile, Dead City is gearing up for uh, its season one final, final on July 23rd and follows Maggie and Negan through a zombie-filled Manhattan. While the main show has concluded, The Walking Dead universe still staggers onwards, with Fear the Walking Dead airing its final season on October 22nd, and The One Who Lives, and The Ones Who Live, expected in 2024. Yeah. What do you guys think? Are you excited for more Walking Dead, or do you think it's just done with and people should just end it now? Let us know what you think in the comments. So that is what we've been doing. Well, that's not what we've been doing. That's what the news has been doing this week. We've just been talking about that. Uh, we'll have a quick 10 second break and we'll come back with the UK Top 40 chart. So back in a couple of seconds. <laughs> uh, we're back. Still David. Still one Gaming. Still episode 360 of the One Up Gaming podcast. Going to go through this week's top 40, UK top 40 charts now. Again, before we go anywhere, subscribe to the YouTube channel, put Evercade on a comment in any of our videos for a chance to win this Interplay Collection 2 cartridge. We also have some t-shirts to give away, so just subscribe, put t-shirt on any comment and we'll give these away. We also have some Steam games and some Humble Bundle games to give away. Again, subscribe and just leave either Steam or T-shirt. Uh, uh, Humble Bundle as a comment and we'll just give these away. We'll email them straight to you. So as I say, we're going to go straight into the UK Top 40 charts now. So we will get right into that now. So, number 40, Crash Bandicoot Ensign Trilogy by Activision Blizzard. Last week it was at 34. Number 39, Resident Evil 4 by Capcom. Last week that was at 26. 38, Sonic Origins Plus by Sega. Last week it was 21. Uh, 37 is Minecraft Legends by Mojang. And last week that was at 38, so it's gone up. Number 36, The Lord of the Rings Gollum by Maximum Games. And last week that wasn't even in the top 40. So that's come back into it so I guess there was a sale on number 35 The Legends of Zelda Breath of the Wild by Nintendo and that's at number th that was at 30 last week 34 is Pokemon Scarlet by Nintendo and that was at 29 last week 33 is Just Dance 2023 edition by Ubisoft and that was at number 36 last week 
Number 32, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Game of the Year Edition by Bandai Namco Entertainment, and that was at 31. And at number 31 is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt Complete Edition by Bandai Namco Entertainment, and that wasn't in the charts. At number 30, Metroid Prime Remastered by Nintendo, and that was at 13. And we have number 29, The Callisto Protocol by Crafton, and that was not in the charts last week. Oh, not in the 40, I should say. Then we have number 28, Sonic Frontiers. Love that game. Feels good. Sega did it, and that wasn't in the top 40 last week. Number 27, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury by Nintendo. I have to breathe after that, and that was at 27, so it stayed the same. 26 was Lego Star Wars A Skywalker Saga by Warner Brothers Interactive, and that's at 16. Number 25 was New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. And that was by Nintendo, and that was at 22. 24 is WWE 2K23 by Take 2, and that was at 15. 23 is Mario Party Superstars by Nintendo, and that was at 23. Still at 23. 22 is Super Mario Odyssey by Nintendo, and that's 25. I think a lot of these charts are skewed, because a lot of these are uh, physical sales data only a lot of the time. So when you think about it, there's not many Steam games that you can buy in the shops and now. And a lot of the Xbox and Play PlayStation 5 -y sort of stuff, they're all downloadable games now. Yes, you get people get the collector's editions and stuff. But a lot of Switch games, I'd have a guess, everyone goes out and buys the cartridge. Number 21 is Dead Island 2 by Deep Silver, and that was at 39. Number 20 is Lego Harry Potter Collection, and that's from the Warner Brothers Interactive. And that was not in the top 40. 19 is F123 by Electronic Arts. And that was at 12. 18, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach by Maximum Games. That wasn't in the top... Wasn't in the top 40. Uh, 17, It Takes Two by Electronic Arts. And that was at 18 last week. 16 is Nintendo Switch Sports. And that's by Nintendo. And that was at 16 again. Hasn't moved. Number 15, Animal Crossing New Horizons by Nintendo, and that's dropped down 1, because it was at 14. 14, Grand Theft Auto 5 by Take 2, and that's dropped down 4, because that was at 10. 13, Diablo 4, and that's Activision Blizzard, and that was at 9. Pokemon Violet is at 12 by Nintendo, and that was 17th. Uh, number 11, Final Fantasy 16 by Square Enix Europe. And that was at 4. Number 10, Elden Ring by Bandai Namco Entertainment. And that was at 19. Number 9 is Minecraft. And that's Nintendo. And number 11, you see, because if it was like other people, they'd have like, yeah, if, I don't know. Because I guess Minecraft, Nintendo's version of Minecraft is um, published by the, the Nintendo. Oh, God. I'll just stop. And start with the stuff. Number eight was Star Wars Jedi Survivor. And that's by Electronic Arts. And that was at number seven last week. Number seven is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 by Activision Blizzard. And that was at number eight. Number six, Hogwarts Legacy. And that's Warner Brothers Interactive. And that was at five. Number five is Battlefield 2042. And that's Electronic Arts. Back into the charts. Number four was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe by Nintendo. And that was at number three. Number three is God of War Ragnarok by Sony Computer Entertainment, and that was at six. Number two is The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom by Nintendo, and that was at number two. And back at number one is FIFA 23 by Electronic Arts. So that is thank you so much to Games Press with the GFK Entertainment software charts, all formats. So thank you so much. And that, my friends, is what we do for the podcast. So please watch us again, watch the full show, watch the part shows. Um, um, yeah, so visit our website, oneupgaming.co.uk. Uh, got new reviews on there, new features, new news items on there. Uh, go to our Patreon page, so patreon.com slash O-U-G. Please uh, subscribe to us, help us out. Um, you can buy t-shirts and jumpers like this I've got on. It's a lovely soft sort of material. It's got uh, embroidered, embroidered like logo on there. Our gaming, as it should be, sort of like thing on there. 
Uh, Vos got some hashtag sh hash hashtag shiggles. So we've got some new things on there. So please check it out either on our YouTube channel on the store page or on our home page itself on the, on the website. It's got like an online store in there. Got a, just the basics on the online store. Um, got a lot of stuff to sell on our Etsy store. So please just search One Up Gaming, all one word, on Etsy to find us for the shop. As always, the games inspired music's out now. 20% of each sale will go to the Child's Play charity. Um, I would say the audiobooks on tip.com. Don't look for us, just go on there. Try and buy stuff, try and give the guy a break, help him out. Uh, hopefully he's feeling better. Um, yeah, please subscribe to us and follow us on Facebook. Just search One Up Gaming. A white logo, no, a white background with a black and red logo, I think it is. We're on YouTube, so just search One Up Gaming and subscribe to us. We've got 2,039 or something stupid for subscribers now. We're on Twitch, so it's twitch.tv slash official. If you want to tweet us, it's at OUG official. I guess it's if you want to X us. Weird. Um, and if you want to email us anything, it's contact at oneupgaming.co.uk. And that, my friends, is episode 360 of the One Up Game podcast. Me, David, saying thank you so much. We'll be back next week. Goodbye.